Stop enabling abusers. Stop enabling abusers, my brothers and sisters. Abusive behavior is something that is being enabled and tolerated and being strengthened within the body of Christ, within the body on a whole. You know, and I think this is something that probably goes on even in other religions because there's a saying that God covers all abuse. <laughs> and so you'll find that you'll find that man or woman very stuck in a relationship and in situations you find yourself um, as a sibling and as a child being, being stuck in situations where you are being abused. Stop enabling abusers because you are enabling abusers. Let's just put it like this, my brothers and sisters. Stop enabling sin. There's so many people that is going to miss the Lord because you thought and you still being there and you still sacrificing yourself that you were doing the right and godly thing. But what you were actually doing was enabling, enabling, is that the word? Enabling sin. The person was sinning and you won't stop. You allowed him or her to continue to sin against you. And then you don't know what to do because you're at your wit's end. You have many holes in you because you are, um, you know, you're making yourself be a punching bag, whether it's physically, emotionally, uh, sexually, you're, you're just doing this and you enable that person. In addition, what you do is you continue to disobey the Lord when he's speaking to you. Some of you, you're in this place where you just, it, it's far gone, but there was a window of opportunity God is showing me where God told you a long time ago to step out of this. First of all, he told you not to get into it, but you did it anyway. And then there was a window that came. Some of you had an opportunity to get a job, to leave, to go do something, and you didn't. Something happened, that person left, and, and you, you wanted them back so badly. And so now here's what's going on. Now, some of you, it's not a relationship. Maybe it's not that where it's a husband and wife, boyfriend, girlfriend type relationship, but problems with your family, my brothers and sisters. This is the new <laughs> guerrilla tactic of the enemy to use those that you love to keep you bound because you're not seeing the sin. You're seeing the person. You're not seeing the sin in their behavior. It's not that it's easy, my brothers and sisters. You want your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your cousins, your, your, your good friends to come to Jesus Christ, but they're not going to come to Christ by you being the sacrifice. You can't be the sacrifice because Jesus was already the sacrifice. He already died on the cross. He already crucified and shed his blood. It's now for you to be crucified again with them and shed your blood for them because it means nothing. It's not going to change anything. Many of you have been there, stayed at the hand, on the, allowed your families to do certain things to you, allow your good friends, allow certain people to do things to you, and you have been cut, hopefully not literally, but you have been treated the crappiest, and they're still the same because your suffering has no power, okay? Your long suffering has no power. Your long suffering is not going to bring change. What it does, it enables them. You must be willing to be in a place to suffer long with the Lord as he pulls you away from that. Pulls you out of those situations. Remove those individuals from you. Long suffering in the fact that they may talk about you, tell people stuff about you, laugh at you, call you whatever. You may go through a tough time, but as long as I have my Lord Jesus with me in this wilderness spirit, in this dark place, I'm alone. I don't know what to do, but I will suffer with God as I head towards a place of what victory having a table prepared before me in the presence of my enemies a lot of you are enabling sin you're enabling sin you're enabling sin you're allowing your body to be defiled by someone who continues to go out there and sleep around has brought you an STD a couple times and you think, oh, this is my husband, this is my wife, I'm supposed to be here. No, your body is a temple of the living God and you're responsible for it. The scripture you say, oh, I can't deny my husband or I can't deny my wife, my brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you. So God, you, you're gonna defile the temple of the Holy Spirit 
for your husband or your wife who keeps on running around on you? Are you going to file the temple of the Holy Spirit by allowing your siblings, your family to continue to say abusive, hurtful things to you that hurts your feelings. They bring up your, your past. They bring up the old things that you've done. They remind you of the time that you, you, you did certain things. They want to call you, you know, a whore or whatever little hurtful things they want to say. Because when you were younger, maybe you were promiscuous, things like that. Oh, you ain't nothing but an old dope head because you used to be a dope head. Do you want to continue to allow them to speak these words to try to rehash what God has thrown into the sea of forgetfulness what God has says you are a new creature they want to tell you something else stop enabling sin that is enabling because you sit there and you allow it now sometimes you're there you're stuck you don't have a way out Lord oh I don't have the money I don't have whatever but you know the Lord is going to give you a window of opportunity People are caught up on worldly relationships. I'm not saying we shouldn't honor our mother and father. We shouldn't love our siblings. We want to, and that's ideally what it should be. But it's not on you to do these things, my brothers and sisters, because sometimes they don't want to. You have parents that do not act like a parent. They will easily come out of the role of a parent and become an enemy. They will become a nemesis. They will hurt you. You have siblings that will come out of the role of sister, brother, and come out of that and slice and dice you and destroy you and say whatever they want to but they want you to remember that they're your brother and you they're your sisters and they're your mother and they're your father but they will come and slit your throat spiritually you have to remember in heaven there's going to be no mother no father and you better believe there is no guarantee that your whole family will make it if you, your mom, your dad, your siblings, everyone is standing before the throne. Do you know that if you're the only one that makes it, that the rest of your family is going to go somewhere else? Their soul eternally. And do you know that if your family have their stuff together and they've been serving the Lord and you the ones acting up, that they're going to go and God's going to send you somewhere else? Where's the family mindset there, huh? What does it mean? Would God desire that all would be saved? Of course. Yes. But what it means that God can make that clear deliation, set those clear deliations and make that separation. So you need to be able to do it. Stop looking at, oh, this is my husband. This is my wife. This is my mom. This is my dad. Are they sinning over and over again? And are you enabling them? What does the word say about Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. You ain't listening to their craziness, nor stand in the way of sinners. You're not sitting and hanging with them or sitting in the seat of the scornful. The word talks a lot about removing yourself from evil people. Those who devise evil and mischief, their heart, their hands are swift to shed innocent blood. To get away from an angry man. To move yourself away from the harlot. What happens when your wife is a harlot? What happens when your husband is playing the role of a harlot? These are things a lot of people don't think about, my brothers and sisters. But the bottom line is, do you love Christ more than mother or father? Do you love the Lord enough? Would you choose God over those who wants to bring you and keep you away from God, to keep you away from him? And it's not even about God, they just want to hurt you. It's not even about the Lord, they just want to hurt you. They want to hurt you. But what you have to be able to remember is Ephesians 6. Your battle is not against flesh and blood. It's not against your brother, sister, your family, your mom, your dad. And there truly is no battle, is there? They are coming against you because of your belief, because of your change. And you continue to try to be kind and try to be loving. And what do they do? They continue to beat down on you and to do things. And God would allow you maybe to be there for a certain period of time. But I want you to understand that it is not his will that you stay there and enable sin. It is a demonic spirit that is operating through that person because that person chooses to disobey the Lord. So when they're disobeying God, they can be rude, they can be mean, they can be evil, they can be conniving, they can cheat, they can bring you diseases, they do all these different things. They're physically, emotionally abusive to you. They can do these things because they first, guess what? They are defiant to the Lord. And so when a person is defiant to the Lord, and they don't think twice to hurt you. You need to be in a position to hear the voice of God because God is going to remove you from it. But a lot of you are staying there enabling 
these behaviors because someone told you, oh, if you're married, you're supposed to stay in this forever. Let them do this. The, marriage is not the place or any type of relationship. There's nothing that says you are to enable sin. I can pray for you. I can forgive you. But if you're in a place where you do, you're not stopping, the person won't stop doing what they're doing. They keep cheating on you. They brought you several STDs. You've been to the doctor for different reasons. You got different people has popped up at your door. You already have a baby outside of your marriage. You got all these little things going on. This person has already dissed you and embarrassed you in front of your kids. You have a sibling that won't think twice to disrespect you, your wife, you, your husband, disrespect you in front of your children. You have parents that won't think twice to do you grimy and do you dirty and play you to the left no matter what you do to them. And no matter how much you try, they disrespect you. You're the one that they will treat crappy while they treat the ones that will not think twice to throw a cup of hot water in their face. They're the ones that they love on. My brothers and sisters, you have to realize don't look and say, oh, they love this person more than me. No, they are alike. It's a spirit. It's a spirit that wants you to feel ostracized and left out and rejected so that you can now have a very hard time believing that the Lord can love you and be with you and you'll be angry at God for different things when God is simply trying to call you out of those situations. I don't know why I'm here today, my brothers and sisters, but I have to obey the Lord. Stop enabling people. There's a lot of people that you're going to find that you've been disobeying God by sticking around in these type of relationships. You can't focus on the things of God. He cannot use you the way he wants to use you because you keep going into the burning house. You keep touching the hot stove. You keep drinking the poison. You keep going onto the chopping block and allowing them to take off a, a baby toe. And, and now they're going to take off the, 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 what's the one after the baby toe, that other toe. They're doing all of those things. The ring toe. <laughs> They continue to do stuff because you allow it. You allow it. Do you think God has forgiveness and he's going to hate people that he puts in hell? No, they chose it. They chose it. God has a standard that he will not lower. He's not going to change. He'll give you plenty of opportunities to get yourself together. But he is a just God. And so that's why when that time comes and if someone misses God, he is just in his decision. But you find people that want to come to God all raggedy and, and dusty, want to have done all types of mess and filth and still expect the Lord to let them in because, Lord, you're a loving God. God is not going to bring your, your toxic, evil self. He's not going to allow you to come into heaven because you are a soul. So when you get out of your body and you have you just have this selfishness, this, this type of narcissistic type of evil upon you, you think God's going to let you dot the doors of heaven? No, ma'am, no, sir. You're a spirit. What you're doing right now, that's the spirit that's upon you. And so you cannot be allowed into heaven that way. And that's why we have to go through the things that we go through. But to wrap up this video, my brothers and sisters, you, many of you are enabling your abusers. Mm-hmm. The enemy has fooled you and made you think, oh, long-suffering forgiveness means you stay here and you allow this to happen. When actually that person, the enemy has found a way, he's used a guerrilla tactic where he brings someone that you love dear, that keeps you bound. They are actually your warden where you never walk in the promises of God. You never do the things that God calls you to do. You never obey him because you choose them over God. No, that's not what I'm doing. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. You're choosing them over the Lord. Anyone that can pull you from the Lord. Anyone that can hurt you so bad and, and, and no matter how much the Lord has revealed what they've done to you, you keep on going. No matter how much the Lord has opened your eyes and have shown you, you keep on going back. And you know what happens in those relationships, especially in relationships where you're in some sort of intimate relationship, actually all of them on a whole, when they've done so much to you and you still stay there, there's nothing left, nothing else left that they won't do because you showed them that you don't stay no matter what. 
it's more than just your husband, your wife. It's more than your siblings, your your mom, your dad, your best friend, good, 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 good friends, all of that, all of that. You know, your good up, good up friend. It's more than that, my brothers and sisters. It's about what God has called you to do. Don't allow these don't allow the enemy and people to trap you in these little things where you disobey God and you never walk in his anointing. You never walk in the things that he's called you to do because of whoever you're married with, married to, your siblings, your friends, your parents, your relatives. And God has put it in my head. Your church folks, your pastors, these people in your life, you just stay there. You have abusive pastors. But that's the next video, my brothers and sisters. Let me get off of here. Be blessed. I hope you will be set free. Pray about this.